Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And today we are reviewing and showing you how to play the game Woodlands, the fabulous tiling game, which was designed by Daniel Fear, I think is how you pronounce it, and was published by Ravensburger. Now, this is a game where it, it's kind of like a, a, a real-time tile-laying transparency game where you play out the stories of Robin Hood, um, Little Red Riding Hood, King Arthur, King Arthur and Dracula, um, which is so bizarre. It's such an interesting mix. They have all the characters from those stories on the cover here. You can see they're, Dracula. and They're on the side, too. Each side has a different... Has characters from a different yeah. story. So this is a game listed as 10 to 99 years of age, uh, 10 plus, 2 to 4 players, and for 20 to 40 minutes. So let's start there. Now, um, in regard to the 10 plus, that's probably, in my opinion, probably a pretty good place yeah, to put this. because it it, it's timed and you need to... You need to... You need to be able to look at the transparency and kind of use your spatial awareness to where the things are going to be when you put it on your tiles. Yeah, and, and that is a bit a bit complicated. Um, younger kids might have a, lot, a little bit trouble with that. Of course, again, this is very subjective. If you have a child you play with who's a bit younger but gets spatial awareness games pretty well, they might be fine with this. Now, the two to four players, this game doesn't change at all for any player count. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. And in fact, since it's all done in real time, it doesn't even last any longer or shorter with a change of the number of, of mm -hmm. players. Um, the 20 to 40 minutes is a pretty good estimate, and that's not varied because of the number of players, but varied because of the difficulty of the uh, which story you're playing. Because Little Red Riding Hood is going to go really quick. Mm -hmm. That's going to always be at like the minimum amount of time, whereas Dracula is going to go a bit longer. He's the hardest. It goes uh, Dracula... Uh, no, excuse me. Dracula is the hardest. Um, Little Red Riding Hood is the easiest. Uh, uh, a little more complicated than Little Red Riding Hood is Robin Hood, and then King Arthur, and then Dracula. Okay. So let's have a look at what comes in the box. So first thing we have here is, why don't you pull that out while I'm showing this, we have the rule book. Now, the rule book is full of tons of diagrams, and this is quite well done. It was easy to understand. Um, I didn't have any problems with the rules. Lots and lots of diagrams. The actual rules of the game are only about seven pages, but then they have these extra uh, areas in the rule book that are color-coded to each of the stories. And what it is is th this has the story for that particular story that you read and then the specific rules for each chapter of that story because each story is broken down into four chapters except for Dracula which is five and each one has slightly different rules which they have a reference to on the side of the transparency for that chapter but they it specifically spells it out for you here which is really nice uh, so you can give everybody a refresher and so they can realize what the language-free version of the rules on the transparency means. So this rule book was very good. I had no problems with this. So next we have the transparency. So there's sets of transparencies for each of the stories. So uh, Little Red Riding Hood is some of the easier ones, though it does get progressively more and more advanced as you go. But they the transparencies themselves, they get much harder as they go. Which one are you, you... This one is King Arthur. King Arthur. I was putting them in order because them being all jumbled was annoying me. So as you can <laughs> see here, they, King Arthur is much more, much more complicated. Lots more rules, lots more things on the transparencies. These transparencies are really nice. They were clear plastic, uh, very easy to see through, and very easy to, 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 to see and understand uh, symbology. I mean, you know when something's a gem, you know when something's a key, you know when something's a trophy or when something's a specific character. 
I, I didn't have any problems with the transparencies at all. What did you think about these? No, I think they're fine. And then the, the thing that you have to put the transparency over is your board. So there's a blank board here, blank white, which on the other side has pictures of all the different symbols just for fun. Mm -hmm. And you start by putting the, tra the transparency you're using on that board in the middle of the table. And you're looking at it and comparing it to your own board, which you're going to be putting tiles on to match up hopefully with that transparency so you can get your character to all this good stuff that gives you lots of points. These are a bit thin. They're just regular cardstock, but... I don't really think it's a problem for this type of game. Um, yeah, because it's just sitting on the table. You're not actually doing anything with it besides just putting it in front of you and then yeah. leaving it there. They could have been, these could have been done in a thicker cardboard, but I understand that a good portion of the production of this game, um, you can really feel was to keep the cost down. Because this is a very affordable game, even though it's a, a good size game, this is very affordable. And a lot of it was they, they were trying to keep the cost down. Like, they could have done it the thickness of the tiles, for instance, but they mm -hmm. didn't. Um, minor complaints of mine. I would have maybe liked a little bit thicker boards for these, but it's not really that big an issue. Um, the tiles are really nice. They're nice and thick, and they're two-sided because you have the regular sides. And then, in addition to the regular sides, on the other side, there is a more advanced side. And these are, are really cool because if it gets too easy for you... One of the ways to make it more difficult is to flip over the more advanced side. And one of the things I think is really cool about this is if you're playing with kids and you want to handicap yourself, you do the advanced side, let them do the easy side. And that's a great way to like scale it for adults to play with kids, which makes this um, one of the few family weight games that I know of that has a built-in mechanism for scaling the difficulty between adults and kids. It's actually a really cool thing. Uh, it's got a sand timer, pretty standard. Um... Not much to say about a sand timer. It's functional. And this is one of those games where when it's important to see when the sand timer runs out, there is someone who is looking at the sand timer. So I don't have a problem with it, including a sand timer. It's got a bunch of colored gems in here. Uh, this is a bit of a set collecting mechanic in the game. And the gems are really nice. They're these plastic, um, plastic gems of green, red, yellow, blue, and clear. And... Um, they're, they're, they're good quality. I like the plastic gems. You got some cardboard punch-out tokens for keys. And some other ones for little standees for the various characters. Because you have to move them around the board. They could have totally used a single pawn for this. Uh, and yeah. had it represent all the characters. But it's having just, all the characters is fun. It's just flavor. Yeah. It's, and it is flavorful. Because, you know, it's nice to have a little standee that, that has a picture of King Arthur. Versus mm -hmm. Little Red Riding Hood, depending on which... Mm -hmm. story you're doing and then the final bit of components again is a minor complaint of mine i do have a little bit of a complaint with the quality of the carts so um and this is minor this is maybe me more you know nitpicking than anything else the cards are fine they're a thick card stock but um it's a bit weird the cards came not like i've never seen a, a production yeah, do we this have to punch them out or something we did they came in sheets non-punched out and you punched out the cards now i mean they're a good thick card stock they're nothing special nothing amazing but the punching them out left some of them with little like little white bits yeah. where they were connected to the card and that's a little bit of a head scratcher it's, for me well that the cards are very rarely used and that well that's my other complaint which we'll get to when we do the review i have a, the, the cards are one of the few things i have to complain about this game most of what it is I would say I understand where they cut corners uh, to keep the cost down, and I would agree with their cost-saving measures. Like, generally speaking, keeping these boards thin was not too terrible a place to bring the cost down. The boards themselves are really just a placeholder. They're not, I mean, it's not uh, in some games where the boards are more important. I, I really get upset when they when they do these cardstock type things. But in this case, it's really just a placeholder for doing a three by three grid and is barely necessary. I mean, mm -hmm. you could just do a three by three grid on the table. Yeah. So, so in that regard, it doesn't really bother me too much. So with that said, the, that's a look at everything that came in the box. Uh, let's head to the table. We're going to show you how you play a game of Woodlands. We're going to run you through the first chapter of Little Red Riding Hood. We don't want to spoil too much for you. And then we're going to come back and talk about the, how this game feels and we're going to rate it and review it. Okay, so you can see a two-player game of Woodlands set up. You have to have all your gems out and your keys and your 
cards and you start you choose one of the stories we're playing the most basic of basic stories of the ones available the easiest and most basic is the little red riding hood story after that there is robin hood king arthur and count dracula in that order is the order of difficulty plus there are lots of optional uh, things you can do like play with the other sides of the tiles to make it more difficult or also add on the advanced uh, transparencies onto any of the transparencies to make them more difficult as well. So to set up, you got to have all of these items out. You have your board set up in the same exact direction as the transparency in the middle of the table. This being the very first and easiest of all the transparencies. And you have the timer and Little Red Riding Hood set up near the board as well. Then the first thing you do is someone needs to take the rule book and read the storyline for chapter one of the story you're doing. In this case, Little Red Riding Hood. So the introduction is... Once upon a time, there was a little girl who was loved by everyone, but most of all by her grandmother, who gave her a red riding hood as a present. Because the girl refused to wear anything else, people started calling her Little Red Riding Hood. One day, the girl set out to visit her grandmother in the forest. <clears throat> now, chapter one is Little Red Riding Hood was a good girl, and she knew she was supposed to stay on the path. She followed the signpost to her grandmother's house, and on the way, she found delicious strawberries. She decided to eat as many of them as she could. So the rules for this first uh, chapter are, move Little Red Riding Hood onto the signpost to get three points. You have to move along the path to reach it. Little Red Riding Hood can't walk onto the forest under any circumstances. Walk over a strawberry to eat it. Uh, of course, strawberries must be placed on the path to reach them. You get one point for each strawberry eaten. You can also collect the yellow gem by walking over it. Take a yellow gem from the supply and uh, gems give you points at the end of the game. Yes, gems are a bit of a set collecting aspect. If you can collect all four colors of gems, you will get five points. Gems that are not in a set of four are worth one point each. So... Without any further ado, we're going to play the first round, and then we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about how this scoring would go. So, for the first round, we start by turning the sand timer, and we shall go, and then we have to rush to, to fill up our board as quickly as possible. The first person who finishes gets to take one of the clear wild gems, as well as the sand timer, and if the sand timer has already run out, they flip it again, and the other players will all have until the sand timer runs out the second time. If it is not run out, though, by the time they take the sand timer, they wait till it runs out and then flip it. So, Lynn, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so, go! All right, so now looking at the transparency there, I need to find a way to get Little Red Riding Hood over to that sign. So let's see what I can do here. I'm gonna, gonna get her over there. And also gotta try to get those, um, very importantly, those strawberries can be worth a lot of points. Also, you, don't, you wanna make sure not to uh, leave any blanks because blanks will uh, lose you points at the end because every blank space is a negative points so they're pretty important as well Ooh, there we go done okay so you take the timer and a clear it, gem it is run out okay so you can flip it and you already have um i have uh some extra time though because i can take a little extra time to check to make sure i've done this all correctly uh since i was not able to get that clear gem i might as well take my time with it i'm just going to do a double check and it looks like I'm good. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm done too. So you can just flip it back over. All right. Now that we're done, we're each going to take turns checking our transparency. So Lynn finished first. She got the little gem. She's going to take the transparency and put it over her board. And then she's going to take Little Red Riding Hood standy and start it on Little Red Riding Hood there and see uh, what she's able to get. So go right ahead. Uh, I can get... One, two, three, four, five strawberries, mm -hmm. the yellow gem. Now, to do that, she is putting Little Red Riding Hood through the actual paths, and you can't go diagonally through a, uh, a spot where she could not fit. It's all got to be orthogonal movement. 
So and I can get to the end. And you can get to the end. Which means now we would we would take your score, which was three points for getting to the end, and five points for the five strawberries, plus you got those gems, which uh, are going to carry over onto the next round. So you already have eight points and two gems. That's really good. That's a good start. Now, I, uh, I also should be able to, I'm pretty sure... I can get Little Red Riding Hood over here to the end. That's the three points. But I can also get all of the strawberries. And I can collect the gem. So I also would have eight points and uh, the gem. But Lynn is a little bit in front of me because she has the clear gem. Then we would move on to the next transparency. And they get harder and harder as they go. The Little Red Riding Hood uh, transparencies are all fairly easy. But there are ones that have negative point uh, ways to get negative points things you have to avoid and you always have to be careful not to place the things you want to get on the on the forest because you can't go on the forest but these transparencies get tougher and tougher as they go sometimes there are lots of things you have to avoid or lots of things you have to get and and there's all sorts of different transparencies with all sorts of different really cool things especially when you start to get into some of the the other storylines, there, there'll be paths you need to avoid or paths you need to cross. And the hardest ones are in Dracula's where there's tons of stuff, tons of stuff to pay attention to. And there's always quick references to all of the rules of how to get points or how to lose points on the side. You play through the four chapters, all four chapters for one game of the story, and you count up your points at the end including points you get for your sets of gems. Now, during some of these, you're often able to find, in addition to gems, you will be able to find keys. And a key, uh, if you can go over a key, you will take one of these key tokens. And then if you're able to go over a chest, you get to draw a card. And the cards have all sorts of different special effects. This one I just drew here says, during the next chapter, a player of your choice, that player can be yourself, must use the Dwarven Forest Enchanted Tile which is a special tile that is in the box that is not part of the normal tile set. But whoever has it, uh, whoever you choose, will get that tile and will have to use it. There are all sorts of different effects. This other one here says at the end of the next chapter, choose an obstacle or a villain. You won't lose points for that obstacle or villain. In addition, there are trophies on, on all but the first chapter in each of the stories and the trophies are something that need to be gotten by whoever is in first place of the score at that time if they don't get the trophy that player will lose three points and this acts as a bit of a balancing mechanic now if multiple people are tied for first place they all need to try to get the trophy so that is how you play a game of woodlands so now let's head back over and we'll talk about how this game feels and we'll rate it and review it okay welcome back so that was a look into how you play a game of woodlands the fabulous tile laying game now um we're going to talk a little bit about how this game plays and feels and review it and rate it so let's start with uh, any negatives we may have so we can always end with the positives i always prefer to end with the positives so now i actually i don't have much in the way of negatives now um like i said before in the beginning some of the production you can tell uh, was to keep the cost down, but most of it is, is areas I agree with. My only production gripe was the cards. I I, I didn't like the cards coming in the punch out uh, sheets rather than being fully cut themselves because it leaves the little little like white bits of cardboard sometimes in certain mm -hmm. areas where it was connected to the sheet. Also, though, my one play complaint about this is also the cards. So some cards are really good. Like you know, you 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 strive to get those keys, and then you get you open a chest and you draw a card. And sometimes it's like this counts as a free white gem, or mm -hmm. or next time you get to ignore one of the bad things, mm -hmm. or something like that. And you're like, oh, that's great. But then sometimes it's like turn someone else's board around, and you're like, that's kind of mean. <laughs> Yeah, half the time when you get like a really mean one, you don't even use it. Yeah. Like, oh, well, because well, this, I mean, most of the rest of this game feels like it should be really lighthearted and just like, you know, fun. And those mean ones feel out of and place. They always, I mean, they do have the thing where if you're in the lead, you have to get the extra thing. Yeah, it's already so a balancing it's, mechanism. It's not like 
you need the cards to balance anything. There's there's a there's some of the cards that I think could have been better thought out. Overall, though, that's and and I, I would say that's a minor gripe because I'm not even saying all the cards are bad or the card mechanic is bad. I'm saying some of the cards might have been a little better developed, maybe replaced by other I, things. I think I would have preferred the because they're treasure chests, mm -hmm. so you expect things to be in a treasure chest, not favors, not stuff like you know someone has to use a you know the the tiles on the advanced side or something mm. for one round i would prefer if like when you got to a treasure chest you got like maybe a couple gems like say like well there is say, that card that's like a free gem well yeah. yeah i mean no but i mean like you know you get this card traded in for like two green gems and a red gem like something yeah, like that that's fair where it's not just like this counts as a wild gem at the end it actually gives you the gems that's and fair. more than one or it, just gives you some points yeah. or something um fair enough some of the some of them though i do i do like i i do like i like the card that forces someone to use one of the special tiles even though sometimes they can be good and you might want to force yourself to use it and sometimes some of the tiles are a little bit of a handicap but those don't feel as mean as like turning the board around turning mm -hmm. the board around is, is a real pain that card i don't like uh, but yeah, some of the cards I do really like. Uh, did you have anything negative to say about Woodlands? Um, no, just what I previously said that I wish the treasure chest actually had mm. treasure in it and not just random things but, that aren't items. Now, that being said, our, our minor gripe about the treasure chest and the, and the cards, we, we've been talking about this game quite a bit because we've played this game quite a bit we have played through every one of the stories the only thing we haven't tried is we haven't tried using the advanced transparencies to put over them and add extra difficulty or the advanced side of the tiles but we've played through we've played through all four of the stories and all the chapters of those stories and we've talked about this game quite a bit and we both agree that those are minor gripes mm -hmm. overall this game is like a cornucopia of amazing things and we are both there so why don't you talk about some of the stuff you like first uh well i like that it is very um what is the word i'm looking for describe it uh you can adjust it to, customizable yes it's very customizable to people's um i'm like my level my, of difficulty my words aren't my words aren't working today <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically it's customizable to like a person's ability yes um I think tons of options is is definitely one of the strengths of this game. I mean, from the two sides of the tiles mm -hmm. to the extra transparency to, to add more difficulty and variety to the. Uh, I mean, it's because I think it's also like if it didn't have all those extra things, I think we would get sick of it really quickly. Because like if you just play the the ones, you know, if it only had the regular easy tiles and yeah. it didn't have any of the extra transparencies yeah. i could see like going through it like two or three times and then being like oh it's just the same thing but Whatever. now like i want to i want okay we've played through every story and now i want to play through every story again and i want to try using some of the the advanced transparency where you put two transparencies out i want to try that now like i'm excited to try that now i'm actually way more excited about playing this game than i thought i would be and i think my excitement level has gone up like it, like you know the first time i played it i was like oh okay i like this this is fun uh, we played a little red riding hood then we played it again on on robin hood and i was like oh this is way more interesting robin hood's got way more stuff to do mm -hmm. then we played king arthur and i'm like oh this is cool and then we played dracula and i was like oh my god because <laughs> like, dracula gets crazy <laughs> dracula kicked our butt <laughs> um but we we still i mean we played through the whole thing and we had fun and um we had a winner uh i don't remember who won dracula dude, but uh but yeah but no the i mean um actually i enjoyed this game this was your buy mm -hmm. you chose this game we went and um, they invited us to do... Because it has Robin Hood in it. Mm. Well, you, it's not just Robin Hood. You, you also love King yeah. Arthur and Dracula. I was, I was kind of like, I was like, OMG, it's all my favorite characters in the game. And then, so you, we were already planning to buy this. Because this I think this was in your top 10 anticipated games of Gen yeah. Con 2018. We were already going to buy it. And then they sent us an email inviting us to come do a demo at their booth. Cause, uh, because I got the press badge at Gen Con this year. So we went and we did the demo, and I was very impressed by the demo. We picked up a copy of the game, 
Um, we immediately started playing it, teaching other people to play it. We bought a, a second copy as a present for someone while we were at Gen Con. This is an amazing family weight game. And like I said before about the customization, because if, if you're playing with kids, if you're playing this game with your kids, you can flip your tiles to the harder side, let them keep the easier side, and it scales it so that, so that you know, it's harder for you. And it, it put, puts you both on this, this, this e equal footing. But that being said, I'll still play this game with adults. We've played this game with a lot of mm -hmm. adults and really enjoyed it too. So it's good for kids, good for adults, tons of fun. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything uh, more to talk about with, with why you like this game? I don't think so. Because I know you're going to rate this game super highly. Do you want to go first or second? Because you've been loving this game, and you've been asking to play it a lot. So I know this is going to be a really high score for you. Do you want to go first? Oh, I do. <laughs> I'll do go want, first. You want to go first? Good. I'm going to give it a 9. I, I knew it was going to be at least a 9. Either a 9 or a 10. So That is incredible incredibly high it, is this is this the highest rated game for you from gen con so far this year i think so yeah i was gonna say i, I think... well i because like the the more advanced levels i'm just i'm we while playing the actual game and being timed we never got like a perfect like got to do everything mm -hmm. and i'm just curious like, like i want to sit down and just try and figure out if there is a perfect configuration of the tiles to get everything on those higher levels i'm sure there is but it's it's probably really hard this game gets very puzzly like the, when we played the little red riding hood game i was like oh this game's a breeze i was like it's fun but it's so easy but yeah by the time you get to dracula you're like Oh, oh wait wait no no wait 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 what 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 what, what? and you just like you know you're turning around you're switching the tiles back because you're like okay i can do oh no wait that's not good because then that's in the forest okay wait wait and i love that i mean the more advanced ones like um i would still probably play little red riding hood at least once more with the advanced sheets on it and maybe the and, advanced sides yeah but um but after <clears> that i think i think what i would rather focus on is robin hood through dracula because they uh, Robin Hood is it is where it's, it stopped uh, pretty quickly. Robin Hood, uh, being only the, the second easiest, stops being a pushover. Little Red Riding Hood's kind of a pushover in mm -hmm. regard to her stories. They're very easy. Um, I think the most difficult one was the one with the foxes and the rabbits, where you have to try yeah. to keep the fox the foxes from killing the rabbits. So you had to separate them into different areas, and there was a lot of them. But um, all, all in all, I thought Little Red Riding Hood was was a very easy um, story to play through. But the others, boy, did they get interesting. So I'm going to give Woodlands a 8 out of 10 stars because I thoroughly enjoy it. Obviously not quite as much as Lynn. Lynn is in love with this game. But an 8 is still a really high score. And the gripes that I had before about the, about the cards really are minor compared to how awesome everything else is i love um rushing to try to get the clear stones to collect the uh all the different gemstones to get sets because every stone is worth one point but if you get all four colors and the the clear one is a wild can be any color mm -hmm. you get an extra point it's a total of five points for four stones so um i also love the puzzly nature of, of laying the tiles out and and trying to you know use your your um, spatial awareness to compare the tiles to the transparency and make sure you're placing them in the right areas. Um, it's always, it's funny for me when I mess up and I put the transparency over and oh man, I started the character in the woods and I didn't get any points around. I don't even feel like it's it's that bad a thing. I know it's totally my own fault and I always think it's amusing. And a lot of times it happens because I'm rushing to try to be the first one mm -hmm. to get the clear gem and then I mess myself up. But all in all, I think this game is great. And obviously, you do too, because you gave it nine stars. So mm -hmm. there you have it. Nine stars from Len. Eight stars from me. We thoroughly recommend Woodlands. I mean, that's 17 total stars between the two of us here. We thoroughly recommend Woodlands. Now, th this is a fantastic family weight game. But you could also, I mean, um, if your kids are advanced enough, they could just play it with each other. Also, um, I don't have a problem playing this with other adults mm -hmm. either. Especially when you get to the more advanced stories. Like, if you have adults who are looking at this and going, push sure, try playing Dracula with them. They're not gonna they're not gonna be yeah. like brushing this off anymore as any as a pushover game, because Dracula is pretty advanced. But there you have it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, either on the game of Woodlands or this video, feel free to put them in the comments down below. 
If you enjoyed this review and tutorial video and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on.